Hello, my name's Andy and this is Rust 101. This is an introductory course to the Rust programming language um, uh, aimed at you if you haven't done any Rust before, um, but probably have done some programming before. If you haven't done any programming, I probably wouldn't recommend starting with Rust, to be honest. I'd suggest starting with Python, maybe. Um, come to Rust later, uh, or JavaScript, or anything else, really. Uh, Rust has some uh, hard concepts in it that we're going to go through in this course. Um, we're going to try and unpack them and, and explain why they're there and why they're so cool and great and why Rust is so awesome. Um, uh, this is going to be quite a systematic course. It's going to run through like everything you need to know to kind of have a, uh, a survey of uh, what Rust is. Um, but the thing that I'm going to be trying to focus on during this course is like why things are how they are and like so that you can get your head into how Rust thinks or how you need to think to write Rust code and for the whole thing, whole thing to make sense, what the kind of um, ideas behind it are. And they are a bit different from other programming languages, uh, some of them. Um, depending which languages you've learned before, some of them will make sen more sense to you and some will need more careful inspection, but we're going to try and go through all of them, make it all make sense. Um, so today is just the intro, basically just explaining that stuff and saying thank you to the people who developed the course material. So the course material um, for this was developed by um, some cool people, including uh, Henk uh, and Falkert and Ruben. Um, so a big thank you to them. Uh, uh, th this was developed in collaboration between multiple universities and the, the course material is um, uh, all open source and, and usable. And I'll be linking to um, uh, uh, where you can get hold of the, the slides yourself and can even contribute to them, improve them. Um, and also the exercises and stuff like that. Um, during these videos, we'll also we'll be doing some of the exercises, maybe even doing some live streams so that you can do the exercises with me. Um, if, if you're interested in that, leave a comment um, below and uh, that will help me decide like whether I should do that, when I should do that. But yeah, a little bit about what we're going to go over. So basically, it's going to be about how to write programs in Rust, uh, including using libraries which are called crates in Rust, um, how to contribute to existing Rust projects, uh, and kind of like the basically the way of thinking uh, that Rust has, like w the things that Rust was designed to make easy and difficult, um, and how you can you know what problems you can approach with Rust, which is in my opinion lots and lots most of most of programming could be done in Rust, and I really like to do that. Um, uh, and you can judge whether Rust is the right thing to use for your projects or the right thing for your career. Um, there will be a focus on like um, actually trying stuff out, doing exercises and things like that. But there will also be a fairly comprehensive survey of like the stuff you need to know to get to get Rust code. Um, the the lecture format um, these these um, lecture notes are designed to be used in a university, so I'm going to be slightly adapting how they work. Um, but yeah, certainly uh, welcome discussion and questions um, either in the live streams or in the comments. Please do. Um, Ask things. Uh, if you if you've got a question, probably other people have got it too and haven't got the haven't got around to asking it. So uh, do ask. Um, the course structure is essentially uh, nine chunks, which I'm probably going to break up into more than nine, uh, and we'll be doing it differently from how you do it in a university. Uh, there's also a project involved with the uh, university course, which I I might possibly get onto, but certainly won't be part of the main the main course of videos. So onto a bit of um, what. Um, tools we're going to use, um, what stuff you need installed. So um, the most important thing that we're going to need is to actually install Rust. And the way you do that is using a tool called Rustup. So in a minute we'll do the exercises and we'll go through um, how to... I won't go through exactly how to get hold of Rustup because it's slightly different on different systems, um, but I'll, I'll go through what it looks like when you've got it and give you the links so that you can find um, how to install it. Also the tool that the, the lecture notes recommend for writing code is VS Code, which is um, a great tool and integrates nicely with Rust, gives you auto-completion and stuff like that. I will be using NeoVim, which has similar features, but is my preferred editor. Also, there's this website called the Rust Playground, um, where you can just type in uh, code, Rust code, interactively on a website and, and immediately see feedback on that. And also, the, the exercises and stuff, are and, and the slides, they're all on GitHub, so I'll provide links to that. Um, so, the, not today, but the next uh, video is going to be... Um, the first part of module A1, module A1 is going to be talking about kind of the basic stuff like numbers, strings, um, operators in Rust, what that looks like in Rust. Um, so before we finish today, let's have a quick look at the exercises that go with this intro module. So here, here's the exercises chunk of the lecture notes. 
And the, the exercises um, for today are basically just installing uh, Rust and doing the basics of using it. So we'll start off um, with um, what, like, getting hold of Rust at all. So the way you do that, uh, and I'll put the link in the show notes, but the way you go that you do that is you go to rustup.rs and you follow the instructions for your operating system. Um, uh, on Linux, that will be uh, running a shell script that you download, um, and on other platforms, it will be different. But once that's all set up, you should have the ability to run these commands, Rust C and Cargo. So let's try that out. So I, I'm just going to run Rust C minus V, like it said, and that should tell us if it works the version of Rust that I've got installed. At the moment, I've got version 1.70 installed, but it might say something different for you. And also, we need to check we've got Cargo installed. And also, I've got Cargo, also same version, 1.70.0. Um, so if you've got Rust C and Cargo working, those are the things you need to, to write Rust code. And almost all of our stuff, actually, is going to use this Cargo command, which is the, the sort of package management, um, create a project, uh, install dependencies, compile my projects. All that stuff happens by typing in Cargo commands. And under the hood, it uses Rust C to actually compile your Rust code. Um, all right, so other things that they recommend is that we should also install um, Rust Format and Clippy. So you can install those, I think, with uh, Cargo install. I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, I'll put these links in the show notes. Follow these links to find out exactly how you install them these days. Um, but just to check you've got those, you can type Cargo Format like that. And it'll probably complain. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's there, but it doesn't quite know what to do yet because it's not inside a, a project. Similarly, you can run a Cargo Clippy and you should. Um, you should be able to see that that's installed and it is on my system. They're also recommending installing Visual Studio Code, so you can follow the links to get hold of that. We will also be using Git, which is a, a tool for managing the versions of your code. I highly recommend that you learn Git, even though it can be a bit intimidating. Um, and I'll provide links to um, how you can learn a bit more about Git. We'll be using Git without talking much about how to use it. As I mentioned, you can get hold of the code for the exercises and the code for the slides. Um, from Tweedy Golf um, on GitHub, and I'll provide you links to that. Um, so let's do the first thing that they suggest, which is um, creating a little Hello World project. Now they they're they're telling us to get it from their Git repo. What I'll actually do is just create one, I think, uh, very rapidly. So we can create a um, a new project by saying cargo new, and we'll say minus minus bin, which means it's a um, a program that can be run. Uh, and then I'll just call it exercise. If I can spell exercise, I'll call it exercise zero. And what that has done is created a directory inside here called exercise zero. So if I go into exercise zero, I can see there's some files. And if I want to run that, I can say cargo run. And what that does is compiles our code, as in take the source code of our, our project, which cargo just generated for us, uh, turns it into machine code, and then runs the program. And the program prints out hello world. So um, how, how far are we going to go with actually looking at the program? So I uh, I won't yet show you. Well, I show yeah. Why don't I show you what it generated? So it generated essentially two files, cargo.toml. So this is the contents of cargo.toml. It's just um, uh, a toml file is just some some sort of metadata about the project. So just telling us like the name of the project, uh, the version number of the project, which edition of Rust it uses, and then if we had other libraries we were using, they would be listed under dependencies. So that's not Rust code. That is your like um, description of your Rust project. And they also created a file called uh, main.rs in the source directory. And if we have a look inside there, this is the Rust program that it generated for us. And we'll talk, we'll look in detail about all the bits of this program, what they all mean next time. So I um, hope you're going to follow along with this series, find out um, enough Rust to get yourself going, able to write programs and contribute to other programs, enough to understand how Rust thinks, hopefully, so that you've got the tools you need to um, learn more concepts. Rust, it, Rust has some really steep bits of the learning curve, um, but I'm going to try and set you up so that you are you have the, the tools, uh, what is it, like the ice pick or whatever needed to climb up those steep curves. Um, it should be fun. Uh, please do give feedback in the comments and let me know whether you want to join me on live streams. Thanks a lot.